Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this redgamingtech.com video we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news which, as usual, has popped up in the past 24 or so hours. Apologies for not being on camera today, but I've been doing the initial photography for a couple of product reviews, including an SSD, plus as well doing lots of work on the All You Need to Know About Xbox Scarlet, including some on-camera segments, so the batteries are drained and by the time I've charged them it would just take way too long for me to kind of do production today. So uh, given the nature of the news we're covering I figured audio only is the better option. It actually works out really nicely because one of the news stories that has actually emerged today concerns AMD and ray tracing via a pattern. So we'll go into that in a moment. I do want to start things out though with the RTX Super Series because there's been an update, a couple of major updates actually since Amy covered this yesterday. So, as you are likely aware, there is the RTX 2080 Super, 2070 Super, and finally 2060 Supers. And as the name does imply, these are slightly higher uh, spec versions of the vanilla SKUs which launched whenever. I say whenever because obviously the 2060 had a different release date to the 2070 and so on. But what's really interesting is that the... Uh, first of all, NVIDIA have actually released a very short trailer on their social media accounts, YouTube and, and uh, Twitter. I'm unsure about uh, other social media, but I'm assuming yes. But uh, the website videocards.com have an update. So the first thing that they have uh, claimed is that the 2080 and 2070 vanilla cards will no longer be sold, essentially. So what we will have is... The RTX 2080 and 2070 Supers, the 2080 Ti will remain unchanged, the 2060 Super will be on sale, but we will have the vanilla version of the 2060. And the pricing for the Super versions of the 2080 and 2070 is going to remain pretty much what we've got now, so 700 bucks, 500 bucks, and the 2060 is going to cost you 400 bucks with the 2060 vanilla going to cost you $50 less. So that's going to be, of course, $349.99. So I've actually heard something a bit different from a couple of the AIBs I've spoken to. They're not 100% certain if those cards are going to be receiving a price cut or become end of line, but I would personally err on the side of video cards information because the uh, AIBs I've spoken to, they are not getting the information directly from head office at the moment and they've said it's going to take a couple of days for all of their uh, all of their uh, technical documents to be updated so it's possible their information is a little bit older and videocards.com have more up to date information so it's going to be really interesting because the release date uh, now is as many of you know is probably good, is going to be the ninth for the 2070 and 2060 with the 2080 Super launching a couple of weeks later on the 23rd, but the announcement for all of these cards, the free cards, is going to be on the 2nd. Basically, these GPUs exist to kick the RX 5700 in the shin. Well, at least two of them, the 2060 and the 2070 Supers exist to kick the um, uh, 5700 and 5700 XT in the shin. I'm I'm going to be really curious if AMD decide to do a last-minute price cut for the 5700 series. I actually speculated on Twitter like a week or so ago. I'm much, not sure exactly when, but a while ago, that this actually may be one of the things AMD were planning, that they kind of knew that NVIDIA were going to do this. So the announcement for these cards, the second, which obviously is around five days prior to the launch of the RX 5700 series, so I wouldn't be surprised if we see NVIDIA announce on like the second, AMD announce a price cut a couple of days later, and then, you know, we're basically then it's down to performance slash the consumer's perceived value. The 2060 and 2070 and 2080 are supposedly around 10 to 15, maybe 20% faster, but the specifications for the 2080 Super have not been confirmed yet, although supposedly it does have a slightly faster memory. So, let's move over to Intel. Despite the fact that Ice Lake isn't exactly available to the mass market, Intel have been very good at delivering open source driver updates. And this one's really interesting because we see initial support for Tiger Lake. 
If you're not familiar with what Tiger Lake is, it is the second generation 10nm processor which will be the successor to Ice Link. Uh, it's supposedly going to be hitting early 2020, so that's either the first or second quarter. It hasn't been exactly narrowed down, maybe I'm wrong on that, but I believe it's either the first or second uh, quarter. Uh, and it will be featuring the Willow Cove GPU. Uh, so this essentially is going to be Generation 12, and that may sound familiar because that is basically Intel's XC GPU architecture. XC, of course, being the discrete GPU. So the two, um, the, what we're going to see there, of course, is therefore the architecture for XC being available in the Tiger Lake processors. And this is much like uh, AMD have done in the past with Vega. We've seen, of course, Vega APUs. So, you know, Intel to implement their iGPUs with uh, XE does kind of make sense. Unfortunately, we don't know all of the differences between Generation 12 and Generation 11, and also, of course, ICE versus Tiger Link. Uh, according to the website foronex.com, what we have seen in this code update is a fourth additional pipeline. There's also a transcoder and improve and rather different clock and power ma management changes. And we also see the addition of two USB Type-C ports. Um, and also there are seven PCI IDs which have been added under Tiger Lake. But that doesn't necessarily equate to the number of SKUs we'll see. Sometimes they just reserve an ID or they've just not added all of the IDs or what have you. So it's going to be really interesting to see how all of this ends up. I wanted to throw the two pieces of AMD news in together. So the first one is actually a new world record for Citibench R15. And this is thanks to the Ryzen 9 3950X processor. And it has actually been overclocked to 5.4 GHz. The image comes via a Twitter user. Hopefully I'm pronouncing the chap's username right. It is Uzi38, I believe. And what we have here is the chip running at 5.4 GHz, all cores of course, with a v-core of 1.77 volts now obviously for those who are not certain yes this naturally is not using a water cooler or anything like that it's using of course liquid nitrogen so i do know that this is not exactly something that many of you are going to be doing on a day-to-day -day basis but what it is is kind of cool haha <laughs> liquid nitrogen cool i'm sorry but it is kind of cool because it basically smashes the previous city bench score so the world so the record prior to that uh, had actually been achieved via uh, a 3950x as well but this manages to beat it by just 67 points. So now we have 5,501 points versus the 5,434, which we had previously. And as for Intel, the 9980XE uh, had scored 5,320 points. So we're looking at almost a 200 point difference between the 9980XE and the 3950X. Obviously, that's not just the number of cores we're referring to here as well that makes uh, this CPU impressive, but also the price difference between the two SKUs. Once again, this is, of course, using a very extreme situation. Uh, it is like liquid nitrogen. Uh, the motherboard we are using, or they are using, excuse me, is an MSI MEG X570 godlike board. So it's the same board if memory serves as we had seen previously. This is an insanely impressive result. And while, of course, uh, liquid nitrogen results aren't exactly uh, going to impact the majority of users on a day-to-day -day basis, it does get positive press for AMD. So, you know, I suppose at the moment they're just taking these wins in terms of PR. Uh, and the next piece of news is AMD ray tracing. Ray tracing was what... NVIDIA were using to push the RTX series of cards and of course we've all seen uh, RTX on even become a meme now but ray tracing is going to be really really embraced by games developers because even Microsoft as well as Sony seem to be pushing ray tracing for the next generation of consoles but those consoles are powered of course by the RDNA architecture 
And ray tracing is a very expensive in terms of the actual computational power required uh, technique. But there's actually a patent which has been published on June the 27th, which gives us, gives us more of a glimpse, excuse me, of what's actually being worked on by AMD. Now, we do know that there are a couple of RDNA architectures which exist slash are in development. The first is the RDNA architecture which is found in the current Narve cards, so that would be the RX 5700 and the 5700 XT. But there is also the next generation Narve architecture which appears, at least according to the current roadmaps, to be uh, plonking onto store shelves by next year or at some point next year. Now this version does have some type of hardware ray tracing enabled, but obviously at the moment AMD are keeping kind of quiet. What this patent does, however, and it is a little old now, it's about a year and a half old, it was actually filed back in 2017, December, but obviously publication date and filing dates are two totally different things, but that patent is actually a hybrid system. So it basically uses both uh, hardware as well as software methods, rather than just the hardware solution and the reason behind this is because each approach, that is hardware only and software only, actually has inherent issues. So software-based solutions are very power intensive and they are very difficult to, schedule, to scale, this is according to the uh, pattern itself, without expanding a significant die area. And just like if you're trying to run ray tracing on, let's say, a GTX 1080 or a GTX 1080 Ti, technically you can do it. Uh, NVIDIA did actually enable ray tracing. So you can, for example, run uh, ray traced Quake 2 on a 1080 Ti, but the performance is going to be, well, I believe the technical term is pitiful. Then the other option is a purely ray traced based solution, but that also isn't necessarily the best option. According to them, the quote is, the hardware solutions suffer from a lack of programmer flexibility as the ray tracing pipeline is fixed to a given hardware configuration and are generally fairly area inefficient since they keep large buffers of ray tracing data in order to memory transaction, transactions, excuse me, geez, I can't speak today, to achieve peak performance. And this basically means that the GPU becomes extremely complex and just, well, not very area efficient as well because if you're dedicating lots of space to ray tracing cores it's also not necessarily the best option and you also have to remember that ray tracing for the next generation consoles if it's going to be a thing you have a finite amount of space on those apus we are basically certain now that the playstation 5 as well as the next generation xbox does not actually have a separate uh, die for the gpu as well as the cpu uh, Microsoft did this, for example, with the Xbox 360. You had a separate CPU and a separate GPU die um, uh, on the initial launch console. They also did this for the original Xbox. The Xbox One, they put the two things together in an APU, and it looks like they are doing the same thing as well as Sony for their next generation consoles. So you can't have like a you know an 800 millimeter die it just doesn't work because of well good luck powering the thing and then cooling it as well plus as well you've got other considerations like manufacturing and yields and you get my point so ultimately you can only have a certain die area the next generation console is supposedly going to be with the xbox just under 400 square mm uh, that's the rumours based upon the renderings that we've seen so far at Microsoft event. So what we have here, anyway, according to this uh, solution from AMD, is a, quote, hybrid solution. And the setup here with the hybrid model, I'm going to read out the most pertinent part of the patent which explains it. The hybrid approach doing fixed function acceleration for single node of the BVH tree. Uh, that is bounding volume hierarchy, just if you're unfamiliar with the term, and using a shady unit to schedule the processing address issues of the solely hardware-based and or solely software-based solution. Flexibility is preserved since the shady unit can still control the overall calculation and can bypass the fixed function hardware where needed to still get the performance advantage of the fixed function hardware. In addition, by utilizing texture processor infrastructure, large buffers for ray storage and uh, bounding 
volume hierarchy caching are eliminated and that's typically required in hardware ray tracing solutions. I'll be going much deeper into the patent over the next several days, particularly when I do the Xbox uh, analysis video. But the overall thought so far is it's a very intriguing way for uh, AMD to approach this. It's quite a different strategy to what we've seen from NVIDIA. It's very difficult to know, though, which of the two GPUs in terms of ray tracing is going to be faster. Um, and we also don't, of course, know what AMD's strategy is in terms of even what performance metrics they're going to be going with. We know, well, I say we know, we pretty much think, or it's implied anyway from multiple roadmaps as well as leaks, that the uh, big Narve is going to be taking on NVIDIA's then current range high-end cards. But, you know, who knows, maybe strategies will change and the problem with this pattern as i always say with patents is a patent does not necessarily equate to a finished product and this could be the next generation rdna product or it could be a card which emerges in 2030 you know who knows really and also the problem with patents is that things can slightly slightly change for a production gpu anyway so maybe they found like a better way to do things a more efficient way or maybe there's another patent that hasn't yet been filed and that's the method they decide to go with in the end or possibly this patent is only for consoles and the uh, GPUs that we see for PC are going to be a slightly different approach. I'm not saying any of this is true, I'm just saying that patents do have uh, some inherent flaws when trying to do analysis of them but I do think it's very interesting that they're going with this approach and it does seem to fit more AMD's mantra to be honest. And also, given what we know about um, the RDNA architecture uh, and obviously its use in the next generation consoles, that makes a lot of sense to me. I'm still not 100% certain of what iteration of RDNA the consoles are getting. I've been told by a couple of people that the Zen 2 CPUs inside the next generation Xbox do have some hefty customizations to them um, unfortunately what those customizations are is still a little unclear i wouldn't be surprised if one of the things we see for uh the zen 2 processors is a reduction in level 3 cache i've said this multiple times before and i wouldn't be surprised instead if we see a larger gpu uh, but obviously one of the things that sony is saying as well as microsoft is that frame rates are going to be of a critical importance so i guess with the next generation consoles for me, one of the reasons it excites me is because it's going to have a direct impact with PC as well, particularly with the things we're hearing about the storage, like um, with the next generation Xbox, apparently the cache, um, sorry, the SSD, which is going to be around 40-ish times faster than the current Xbox, but it can also be used as a cache as well, a memory cache, which has some really interesting implications for games. Anyway, I think that's just about it for this video. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. If you did, then, well, you know what to do. Like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.